Hey everybody. So this week we are making a sort of a vertical card wallet situation and the pattern is actually free on Weaver's website. Uh, we designed it, Kaylina designed it, and um, you can go to the first link in the description to download it and make along with us. So let's get into it. So I'm going to use a little more of this. Um, I've been on a roll using this. This is the Hermano London Tan Bridal and it's uh, split down to about three ounces. And then we also have, Weaver sent us, um, they expanded their line, the line of Ritza threads that they, they carry. So we get to pick a funky new color. And I think I'm going to go with this um, beetroot. I think that'll pair nicely with this leather. So we're going to go with this one, and then we need to get the pattern cut out. So if you ever have to make cuts like this, which is a right angle notch into the leather, this part can be a little bit difficult. I'm going to show you how I do it. Um, so first, obviously, we're just going to make, I already made these cuts, but we just cut those two little tabs. Then we're not going to try to cut the whole thing at once. I'm going to use, I'm using a number two X-Acto blade. I'm going to stick my blade down into that corner and make half the cut. Then I'm going to flip it around and make the other half of the cut from the other direction. And there we go. And so that way, if you make a cut here, you, you would kind of have to like cut and then move your blade vertical or something. It's not super fun, but this is a super easy way to do it. Just like that. Similarly, um, this is going to be the thumb slider for the back of the wallet. If you don't want to cut this curve, um, you can use a strap end punch. Now there are a bunch of different ones. I tend to prefer, this is Weaver's style, where it doesn't go straight afterwards. I tend to prefer this for doing these little round cuts, because you can see if you have a, a belt and punch that, ha that gets the curve and then goes straight after, it's usually always over the allotted size. So this is a three quarter inch strap end punch. This is gonna be wider than three quarter inches because the belt needs to slide in, inside of it. With these, they don't have the straight part at all, which is great for cutting internal curves. So all I'm gonna do is line up my punch with my pattern on both sides. And then we go in with our ruler and just basically connect the dots. And once we um, zap off that little edge with the beveler, it'll look super nice and clean all around. So the last piece we included in the pattern is the strap. It's just a half inch strap. Um, if you wanna trace this out, cut it, go for it. But I'm just gonna use this for the length of the strap. I'm just gonna use the lines on my cutting board to cut a half inch strap. Um, I find that way easier than tracing out that little tiny piece there. Um, so I'm just gonna make my own. And then I will use this for just the length. And now we have the whole pattern cut. So. It is time, we're gonna do a little bit of skiving. And now, of course, you don't have to do this. You can put this whole pattern together without skiving, but I'll show you if you're gonna skive where you might wanna think about skiving. So here's a finished piece, and this is what we're making. And it doesn't have the thumb slider. Um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna skive down the inner pocket, and then this is our flat piece, and we're gonna skive down just the part that's like in the wallet here. So I'll show you how to measure that out. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my inner pocket, and I'm going to put it on my flap body part. And I'm going to make a mark right where it ends here. And so we're going to skive this piece, this piece, this piece, this piece, this piece, this piece. And the reason we're going to do that 
is because this piece is going to match up here and wrap around like that. So we can get these two pieces as thin as we want um, to cut down a little bit of the bulk. So assembly on this isn't hard, it's just a little tricky because of these little slots here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to line up our bottom pocket here, and I'm going to make a couple little marks in the little slots where our strap goes on both sides. And then I have, I'm not going to glue in those slots, so I'm going to glue along the sides of a pocket. And I suppose you could glue the bottom, but I don't glue the bottom on stuff like this because it's going to have pieces wrapping around it. Just kind of lets it, gives a little more movement when the piece is in use if it's not glued. So we're going to glue up the sides here. And then we're going to use our markings and we're going to glue the sides here, but we're going to leave that center part bare without any glue. And now once we have the front pocket glued down, we're going to flip it over and we're going to make a little mark because we're going to use the front pocket as our indicator of where we're going to glue our back pocket and that's going to be the pocket with the thumb slot like that so I'm going to use our little new scrapey tool thing rough that up a little bit And then I'm going to make a mark on the bottom here so I know where to glue to on our outside piece as well. And then we'll just glue these up next. The last gluing step once we have our back panel with our thumb slot on is we're going to fold this over. You want to make sure you get it nice and tight on the bottom. There's plenty of room in the pattern. We don't need any extra space down there. We're going to fold it nice and tight. I like to use my cutting board to make sure that it's even. You just line up this side with one of the lines and then we can make sure that on this line we have both pockets. And I'm going to make a little tiny mark and then we're just going to rough this up because this is our last glue joint. And I'm still going to not put any glue in there. We'll, we'll deal with that after this is all put together. And if you want to give this a little tap with a hammer, by all means, just be gentle with it because you do have that little gap there for our strap. Alright, so once we're put together here, I've gone ahead and I've sanded down our edges. Now, we're actually going to need to burnish this before we put everything together. So what you want to do is you want to go in and find that little slot that we've created, right? Because what's going to happen is our strap is going to slide into that slot. It's going to wrap over, and then I've made sure to open the slot on the other side, make sure that's visible there, and that's going to slide in there. And that's how we're going to get our strap to fit. And we don't have to do any harsh cuts on our flap. It'll slide right in, give us lots of room. But because we're, this is how it's eventually going to be, we can't burnish this after it's all sewn together. So we need to edge this and burnish it now before we put our strap in and sew it.
we have our stitch line marked out, this is how we're going to put this together. Now, you have to put these upside down because it's going to fold over. I'm going to slide one, one side, I'm going to slide one side into this slot. And we want to make sure that we get it all the way in. And then we're going to punch. Now we're going to pop out our little strap here and we're going to boom, boom, flip it to the other side and slide it into that slot. And then we're going to punch down this side again. Well, not again, but same way as this other side. So I've sewn down to where our slot is, and now what I'm going to do, I'm not going to use any glue. You can use glue if you'd like. I don't really find that it needs it. I'm going to slide in the side, and you want to make sure that you keep them. You can kind of see where the holes are punched on each side, so you, you don't really um, lose track of which side is which. But I'm going to slide that in, and then I'm just going to stitch right through it. The only tricky part sewing this whole thing up is the other side, but it's really not that bad as you'll see in a minute. So, I'm just going to make sure, and you know right away whether you're hitting leather or you're getting right through that hole that you punched. Which we got through, which is great. And then it's just sewing up the rest of the seam. So I've sewn up from the bottom this time on our second side. This is where it gets a little tricky, but it's not hard. So I'm going to take my wallet, I'm going to kind of bend it in. Don't worry about it bending permanently, that's not going to happen. I'm going to take my second side here of my strap, and I'm going to slide it in. And by bending it like this, that gives us plenty of room underneath to get our needles through. So we're going to, this is a little bit difficult, I don't know how you do it in a stitching pony, because I don't use one. but. By hand it's not too hard. The only thing is you want to go slow and make sure that you're getting your needles through all the stitch holes. And you can do that, because we didn't glue it, by kind of taking a peek in there and making sure that you're getting your needle through that stitching hole that you punched. And I'm not worrying about my thread tension so much for these three stitches. If it were a longer stretch, um, I would. But with three stitches, we can get this stitched in place, then we can pull and tension our thread. And now, we flatten that out, fold it down, and you see that we have our loop, our strap, in those little slots, sewn in. So now what's left is to just finish the stitch line. So all that's left, since we're already all burnished up on the bottom here and we're all sewn up, is to put a little bit of a shape on our flap. So the way this is going to go together is this simply just slides in here like this. And if you want to leave it straight, by all means leave it straight. But we left the pattern straight so that you can get a little creative on it. So you can do one big curve, you can do a western shape, you can do whatever you want. I am simply going to take our spool of thread and use this as my curve. I'm going to mark that out with my stitching all. And then I'm going to cut this. And there we go. 
And now all we need to do is, I'll clean that up just a tad. We just need to burnish this one little edge there, and you can see we're good to go. And here we go. So remember the free pattern is on Weaver's website, first link in the description, and here's the piece. So on the back you have your thumb slot, it's still brand new, but most used card can go there. On the inside, you'll notice that this is, you can put cards here, but it's a little short, and that's because it's for a few folded bills. Those go in and out nicely. And then of course you have another card slot here that will hold even more cards. And the thing that I really like about this, that Kayleen did a great job designing, was by doing this, um, instead of the loop kind of being sewn flat in like this, so it sits really tight, this loop has lots of play. So whether you have one or two things in here, like we can take this out and there's only a single card in there, it sits really nice. But if we want to load this thing up and we'll put, we'll put that in there. Let's see, let me try to hide my credit card numbers here. One, two, three, four, five. This is six more cards. We can load that up. Look how, look, seven cards six bills, it fits just as well. So this is a great design if, if you um, don't know what the person you're making it for is going to be carrying because it'll work for a variety of different things. So that's going to be it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember, free pattern in the description, and we'll see you in the next one.